Oh yeah. It's time. More. Okay, that's enough. And we are now in position <clears throat> for a great video to happen. And first of all, before we even get started, you know what we have to do. Get your coffee cup and get ready because in three, two, one. Coffee cheers. Good morning, everybody. First of all, I want to say hello. How are you doing? And I want to acknowledge the fact that all kinds of crazy stuff is going on out there all over the world, not just in America, but all over the world. And just for now, for the next five minutes, forget about it. I have so many friends who are stressed beyond belief. They're arguing sides, good friends, family members, they're arguing over who's right or who's wrong. None of them, none of us understand all the facts and I just think for the next few minutes, let's just not think about it. Let's not talk about it. Let's have some coffee and talk like we used to. Where have you been? I've missed you. I've been getting tweets from you guys on Twitter and messages on Facebook like, hey man, we missed the videos. Like we don't care what you record, just record something. We, we, we missed the video. So here I am trying to get back in the swing of it. I have been extraordinarily busy rebranding my marketing stuff. And that's pretty much done. The new website is launchandoptimize.com. That's where I will talk about affiliate marketing. This YouTube channel probably won't discuss that too much because there are other parts of my life. After 10 years of it in the marketing game, I have realized that no matter how much money I make, I need to incorporate music into my life or I'm not gonna be happy ever. So that's what I'm doing. So my focus right now that I'm spending most of my time on is writing songs and trying to convince myself to go play them somewhere. After taking a break and after getting sober, it's been a really strange experience between me and music. Because when you're drinking all the time and a raging alcoholic like I was, it's not hard to find confidence because you're, the alcohol blows your ego up, you can step on stage, you perform, you think you're the greatest guy in the world, even if you sound terrible, you have a lot of confidence. But when you take that away, the reason I started drinking was because I'm very shy, nervous. I was a very shy and nervous teenager. When I drank, I felt fantastic, so I just kept doing it for a long time. And it was a great solution for my, um, for my shyness, until it turned into a new problem and then it messed up my whole life. So now I have to manage without it. And it's very strange because I can write a hundred songs, convince myself they're all terrible and I will never play them for anyone. That's what I'm dealing with. That's what my natural brain does to me. It says, don't play these. No one will like them. They're not very good. So while I'm writing songs, I'm having to deal with my own critic, my own inner critic. And I'm sure you guys know exactly what I'm talking about. Like sometimes you may look in the mirror and, the, and your inner critic says, you're an idiot, you're fat, you're an asshole, and you're none of those things. It's just like this voice in your head. So when I'm writing songs, I'm critiquing them as I'm writing them. Like, I guess, I don't know, maybe everybody does that, but I, that's one thing I'm working on right now is trying to reestablish my connection with music. Because like I said, after it's been eight years since I started doing, spending a lot of time on other things and less time on music. And the journey back is a difficult one. And it's an inner struggle that no one would understand unless they've felt it. And I was actually reading a bio of an artist here in LA that I discovered recently named Angelo De Augustine. Incredible voice, really quiet, high-pitched voice. He plays a, a classical acoustic guitar, just him and the guitar. It's incredible. But I was reading an article, a bio. In his bio, he says how 
it's hard for him to play shows. I think the music's incredible. I'd go see the guy play twice a month, every weekend if he'd play, but he doesn't want to play too many shows. And I get it. And so I Googled too nervous to perform music in public or something like that. And I came across just tons of articles with these really incredible artists that um, were just too shy to play their shows in public and they would get them to play a show. Like these guys, some of them had hit songs and they just wouldn't go perform. And if they would finally book one show, a bunch of people would show up and they couldn't walk on stage. And I get that. I understand that. You know, Shadi Jägermeister, before you go on, does a lot of good for you <laughs> if you're not a drunk or, you know, a beer or a glass of whiskey or something before. And when I think back, like most of the, I remember joining a band in Dallas and I never would have, they were playing in a club with no singer and I was nervous. I was like, I want to join this band. They were great. My girlfriend was like, well, just walk up there and sing. I said, I can't, what are you, crazy? And she, we had a flask in her uh, jacket pocket. She took it out. She said, drink this, go up there and sing. I took a big gulp of that, that flask. And then I was like, yeah, walked straight to the stage, told him I wanted to come up and sing. I sang with him that night for like five songs, just making up words, jumping around, being a, a singer. And then I played with him for many, many years. We, we, we met up the next morning and we started rehearsing and started doing shows together. So when I look back, like alcohol, although it did destroy my life in some ways, it did help my life in other ways. It's interesting like that. I guess there's a good and a bad for everything. But anyway, that's, that's where my mind is right now. And maybe you guys identify with that, you know, maybe not. But maybe you can, that's what I'm, that's what I've been doing. My guitar is right there. So far I've written about 15 songs, six or seven of them are finished, like all the way, 100% done, and then maybe four or five of them, three or four of them are pretty spooky good, depending on the, my mood when I play it. Some days I'm like, this is probably the best song I've ever written, and then the next day I play it, and I'm like, this is the worst song I've ever written. <laughs> I think we all deal with that to some degree, I don't know. Anyway, that's what's up. I have a friend coming into town this weekend from high school. We're going to go see Temple of the Dog play at the Forum. Temple of the Dog, Google it. 25 years ago, there was Soundgarden and Pearl Jam. They came together after Pearl Jam's previous band's singer died. They had a band, their singer died. That's why they formed, they formed Pearl Jam after that. But this was a unique recording experience where Soundgarden and Pearl Jam came together before they were really famous and did an album together. And it's incredible, it, only, it was only one album a long time ago. They did one show, I think, back then. They did one show and then Pearl Jam exploded and Soundgarden exploded and it never happened again. But now, all these years later, they're doing theater tours. They're playing rooms like the Forum here, you know, not giant stadiums. And so we're gonna go catch them because who knows if they'll do it again. Anyway, that's what I'll be doing this weekend. And uh, hope you guys are doing well. And as always, I will see you in the future. Oh, and by the way, my um, iMovie that I use to make the intros and outros for the video, it stopped working on my computer, I don't know why. So that's why there's no fancy intro and outro. So for, this is the outro. Imagine it's really cool. Da, 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 da.